This is a Marconi CSR5 World War II HF and LF receiver. Just uh, finished refurbishing it. Um, changed quite a few components out. There's a bag of the uh, removed parts. <laughs> um, all the tubular paper caps. Um, there's some uh, domino style paper caps, uh, electrolytics. Um, all been replaced and just about every resistor about 95 percent of the resistors have been replaced as well and it's now working really well um, it's currently tuned to uh, 15 megahertz it's wwv uh, recalibrated really well it's pretty accurate on all bands WWV on uh, 20 megahertz. The selectivity control works well. I suppose on the minimum selectivity, that's uh, the first crystal position, second crystal position, third crystal position, which is really sharp. It's about 100 hertz minus 3 dB uh, passband on the which is far too, uh, far too narrow for a, an AM signal. Two is pretty good selectivity for uh, general shortwave reception. Uh, WWV on 10 megahertz. A little bit too early in the evening to get WWV on 5 megahertz. It's just there. It's only about 20 to 5 in the evening in November. Victoria, BC. The um, This set doesn't have the broadcast band. It's got a couple of LF bands instead. It just tuned the top end of the broadcast band, so there are some stations there. BFO. Need to turn the RF gain down a little bit for that to work properly. AGC is on at the moment. Switch it off. It becomes distorted because uh, it's overloading. Um, limiter control works well. Um, tone control, it's got three position tone control. It's minimum, medium, maximum treble. It's also got provision for a crystal. You can plug a crystal in here and switch to crystal oscillator as a local oscillator instead of the variable local oscillator. Two phones outputs. Um, the RF gain is interesting, it's kind of a 20 position stepped attenuator rather than a regular sort of uh, variable control. Um, it's quite a, quite a well built set, really really strong set uh, in terms of mechanical construction and very reliable set. It's running off a, a homebrew power supply, um, this is the power supply I uh, built last week. I built a few of these uh, little power supplies into old computer power supply cases. Um, it's got a mains transformer, um, filter choke, a few capacitors, a couple of resistors. I left the, fa the computer fan in here so it actually keeps it nice and cool. Um, 
it's only on the fans running off about eight volts instead of 12 volts so it's if you can't hear it it's very quiet but it just gives a little bit of airflow through the uh, through the case so yeah it's quite a quite a nice receiver the uh, cabinet for it is actually downstairs i need to get uh, get this boxed up for the owner and they can go home and uh, on the bench at the moment i've got uh, this gadget <laughs> this is a national um, receiver and it's a version of the NC100 um, called the Catacomb Set and the reason it's called the Catacomb Set is because the uh, the coils, the RF coils are in this sort of catacomb. This is the this is the top of the uh, the coil box and this fits over over here and when you change wave bands the whole coil box moves along and connects with the uh, with the tuning gun, which is quite a quite an ingenious system, and uh, you've never actually worked on a catacomb set before. I've, I've used them, but uh, I've never owned one, and I've never never worked on one before. Hopefully, there's not much to do in the coil box. I opened it up just for a quick demo here, take a few photographs, and the spiders have been in here, but otherwise, it looks looks in pretty good shape. Um, most of the capacitors in this radio are uh, the original uh, waxed paper type. There's one or two replacements. And one there. I think I saw uh, some in the power supply section on the other side of the chassis as well. The coil back so This big rack and pinion uh, system there. <laughs> it's quite remarkable. I mean, whoever thought of that, just amazing. Um, of course, this this set is the the HRO style with the PW tuning knob, and um, sort of one up from the the old HRO seniors and juniors of the mid nineteen thirties, I guess. And they were on the go until the, in the early war years, I guess as well. I used to have one of those, very good receiver. That had plug-in coil boxes, and this was kind of a um, a way of getting rid of the uh, the plug-in coil boxes and having all the uh, the coils in the in the radio under the chassis so they're not affected by heat which is a good thing and yes there's a new little litig there um i'm not sure I'm not sure if the fuses are original or not they probably are it's a lot of fuses two fuses on the back panel two fuses down here a bathtub cap there um these are little litics the old can electrolytics are still in circuit that's a replacement mustard cap there. Anyway, um, that's the next project over the next few weeks. Uh, should be uh, should be very interesting.